Segment 1 of the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race is in the books. On to Segment 2, and this is where it all comes down to crunch time. The drivers have had an opportunity to take to Eminem Super Speedway for 25 laps, be able to figure out how their car handled, and also now have an opportunity, if they wrecked out of the first segment, to be able to get a little bit of redemption, although they will be starting at the rear of the field. The drivers starting off where they finished Segment 1. It's going to be Jack Richards, the winner of Segment 1. $10,000 richer, and he's looking to add even more to that purse here as he's going to roll off from the pole alongside of Tim Walsh, who finished in second, Chambers, who finished third, Trent Dunham, who finished fourth, and Sean Galligan, who got fifth in the segment one. Now, remember, 50 laps of racing, the drivers have to make a pit stop, and the winner receives $1 million. Well, before we get these cars under green, during the seg the period we had of a little bit of a break there between segments one and two, we were able to go down and ask a few more drivers what a win in the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race would mean to them, and we will now give you the audio that we got during our interview with them. Well, it would mean a lot to me to win the All-Star Race in the Snickers Cup because that's like the biggest level of the series it's like it means a lot if you win it there you've like won like you've like won the biggest prize and um like and then this I may have won the opens for the mobile one and the and the Oreo truck series but but winning the Snickers cup is like winning the biggest challenge it's like knowing you went through everything and win the biggest event of all the of all the series and like I just want to win it would mean a lot to me because it would be my first win anything in one of the series and I just want to do it for my fans and uh, you know it would mean a, it would mean a lot to me to just you know Finally get a finally get a win in the Snickers Cup of any type of race. It just it would just be awesome, man. Um, it would it would probably it probably mean a lot to me than probably any other NRT three victory I've got. But in other all other words, it would mean a great abundance. It would just mean a lot. So, we'll see, we'll see what happens, and, you know, can't wait to see what happens in the Snickers All-Star Race. What would winning the NNSC Race, Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race, mean to me? It would be my first ever All-Star win in any of the NR 2003 leagues here on YouTube. It would be a really special win to me because it, this is my... This is my debut in the Snickers Cup Series, and what better way to start up a debut is by winning the All-Star Race. What would it mean to me to win the NSURA Snickers All-Star Race? Well, it would mean a lot to me because this is my rookie year in the Snickers Cup Series. I have never been in a you know, NSURA Top Series before until I joined in like in January and it was pretty cool being in the NSURA and also it would mean a lot to me and my team high octane racing if I won this it would mean a lot and and all star race number two here I go so there you go, those are the drivers that we talked to, of course our pole sitter for the segment 2, Jack Richards, and also Alexander Dawson and Eric Burton, both starting off near the mid-pack area. Alright, so 50 laps of racing, and we're ready to turn them loose. The pace car is going to roll off, and it's going to be Mr. Jack Richards to get us underway here. Everybody's going to roll off. Now, a lot of these drivers, as we mentioned, they have gone to backup cars, and they, you know, most people think, well, they don't have a, 
we don't have a clue what we're going to be able to do in our backup car. We've never raced it before. Well, actually, during the practice session, all drivers in this field took the opportunity to race both in their primary and backup car, so that way they knew just exactly what kind of a car they'd be getting into. So, these drivers, they are not racing with a blank sheet of paper. They know what their cars are capable of, whether it be their original car from segment one or a backup car. Oh boy, this is going to be good. 50 laps of racing, and then we will know at the end of this who is going to be the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race winner for Season 3. Next week we head to Lowe's Motor Speedway. Certainly looking forward to that. Then it's on to Chicagoland, Daytona, Michigan, and then New Hampshire, the final stop before the chase begins. This season is getting going pretty quickly. We're already into mid-season. I'll tell you what, it won't take long for us to get to the chase. A lot of drivers looking to get the season turned around, as mentioned at the top of the program. A lot of drivers trying to continue their wave of momentum this season. And a lot of drivers just trying to get the cash here today. As a matter of fact, there are 38 drivers that want the cash. Every driver in this field wants to be a millionaire. Here we go, the pace car peels off, and we're ready to turn them loose for the last time here during the All-Star Race weekend. The green flag is out for Segment 2 of the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race. No sooner does the green flag wave, but drivers start picking their lines, moving down, going five wide already near the back, four wide up at the front. Boy, it didn't take them long at all. Now, here's the difference between Segment 1 and Segment 2. Segment 1, you wreck, it's okay. You got a backup car, you get another chance. Segment 2, you wreck, you are out of contention. So, the cost is even greater here in Segment 2 if you wreck out. I would venture, I guess, I would go out on a limb and say these drivers, as Max Russell goes by Jack Richards for the lead, that these drivers are going to be a little bit more careful now as to what they do. So that way they do not end their hopes of being the all-star race winner. But they're racing awfully hard here. They're four wide still down the front straightaway. Almost five wide there. Alexander Dawson being the meat in the sandwich. They're nearly sticking his car into a hole that wasn't even big enough to fit his car into. But he stuck it in there. And Max Russell, he's just enjoying the view as they are racing four wide for second behind Aaron Williams way down to the yellow line as he looks for that second position. He's got buddy Alexander Dawson right behind him. Tell you what, though, these drivers, they'll be working together here early on. I'll tell you what, when we get to about lap 40, it's just all out the window. Those drivers are going to be racing each other as if they were bitter enemies. It's pretty much all or nothing. I mean, this is a non-points race. Drivers are going to be taking risks. They're going to be doing what they normally would not do if it were a points-paying race. And it's now a breakaway here. Kind of an interesting irony. Max Russell and Alexander Dawson, they both finished 1 and 2 in the Snickers shootout. Number 1 in order to transfer into this event. So they're racing side-by-side side again here in the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race. And Dawson will take the lead. Not for long, though. Look at Matthew Rodriguez coming to the inside. And, oh, there they go! Eric Burton, Seth Cole, Emilio Navarre, and Tim Walsh is involved. As Dawson leads at the line. Caution's out. Oh, there's Arnold Columbia. He got nailed. Just plowed into the five-hour energy car. There's Emilio Navarre. I think he spun down pit road. So did Seth Cole, and they're making pit stops. Jamie Watson back there, top of your screen. He's smoking. There's Eric Burton. He was involved. Sean Galligan may have also gotten a piece of it. And there's Tim Walsh. Jamie Watson wrecked. That engine is blown, and he's done. And Tim Walsh started in second Finished second in segment one. I don't think he's going to finish in second in segment two. What a tough break for the Toyota Camry for Michael Walter Bracing. Emilio Navarre, he just slid down pit road, I think, and he just made a pit stop. So he's going to be ahead of everybody else as far as fuel is concerned. Let's see 
what happened as Alexander Dawson leads us under the caution flag. Okay, let's take a look, see what exactly happened. Let's see if those two yellow cars down there, Seth Cole and Eric Burton, do they get together right there? Yes, they do. Turns Eric Burton up into Emilio Navarrete. Jamie Watson, Tony Speed, Tim Walsh, Felix Harris gets turned. And it's just on from there. Oh, man. We're getting the word that... Oh, there's also damage to... I think that's Jack Richards' number five car. Is that the case? Is that Richards or is that McCreary? That, I think, is Richards. Sean Galligan somehow squeaked through that. I'm not exactly sure how. And then you get Tim Walsh trying to turn around. And right side of your screen, you can't see it. But Amelia Navarro, Seth Cole, they spun down pit road and decided to make pit stops. Not really much damage to them, and oh, there's Columbia running right into the 15. Oh, man. And Walsh, that, that'll give you a whiplash. Man, it's a good thing they got those Hans devices inside the race cars. Well, let's see if pit stops are going to be made as we get ready to go back to green flag racing. Now, let's see if they're going to make pit stops this early. Remember, they have to make a mandatory pit stop. Doesn't matter what kind of a pit stop it is, as long as they come down pit road, stop in their pit box, and leave. And it looks like the front five are going to come down pit road. That's Dawson, Rodriguez, Anthony McCreary, Vincent Marsh, and Trent Dunham. And it looks like everybody else is coming down pit road as well. I don't think anybody's staying out as we will follow Alexander Dawson on pit road. Looks like maybe just a fuel-only stop for Dawson. That is indeed the case. Dawson will only go for fuel only. Let's watch this race off of pit road. It's going to be Alexander Dawson, then Anthony McCurry, then Matthew Rodriguez, then Trent Dunham. Who's going to get fifth? Looks like it could be Max Russell. He's got a drag race with Aaron Williams, and I think Williams just got Russell for fifth off of pit road. Should take a look at everybody else. Whoa, there's Jack Richards pulling into his pit box. They're going to get repairs done to that car. He does have front end damage. Look at the gaggle of cars coming off pit road now. These drivers, I think, elected to go with four tires. As the caution is out. Man. We're still trying to tally up who is retired from the race and everything. And Trent Dunham, he ended up coming out fourth off of pit road, I believe. Trent Dunham along with many other of these drivers in this field, is not only a driver in the NSRA, but also is a NSRA member and also an NR2003 commentator. And we are now going to show you an excerpt of an interview with Trent Dunham on one of his most favorite NSRA finishes, and it is not one that is featured here on this channel. It's actually one that he hosts. So let's take a look at Trent Dunham's favorite NSRA moment. My favorite NNS CRA moment, oh boy, there is a lot of those, but but I don't want to be a jerk, I don't know if this makes me feel like a jerk, but I, I would have to say my favorite NNS CRA moment was actually from my own NNS CRA series, the Caterpillar Barking Series. It was round number seven and it took place at Daytona International Speedway. They were going into turn three on lap 19. Trent Dunham is going to block Travis Mitchell as they are running three wide behind them in this huge pack. I remember as they were going out of turn three and into turn four, I was I was the lead car in the in the number eight Dodge Charger, and right behind me was Travis Mitchell. He was going to the inside, and as they exited turn four and towards the front straightaway, things got wild. It went three wide, and Tim Feigl he was coming in that number one Ford Fusion. Uh oh, now trying to move up is. Tim Fogel in the one and Dylan Pulte in the four. Come this time by, we're gonna have the white flag. And uh oh, Tim Fogel's moving to the inside now. Trent Dunham takes the white flag. As soon as I took that white flag, I thought I had that race in the bag because with them going two or three wide, all I had was a lot of clean air. But boy, was I wrong. As soon as, soon as I took that white flag, Tim Fogel, he, he made my car get loose and I had to take the middle row in turn one. As they were heading into turn two, they started going 
insane. They went three and four wide, and as soon as I saw them go four wide, I thought that they were gonna wreck. And they did. And they are just running wild behind them. They better be careful. And and whoa, chat and whoa, Tim Feigl, he forces Trent Dunham on the high side. And that's gonna open the door for Tim Feigl, but don't count on Dylan Pote. And whoa, they're running four wide behind them. They better be careful. Oh my the record behind them, Robert Band, Alex Band, his brother. Uh oh, the record behind them. We're gonna have to take take a look at that later. Seeing that, seeing that crash at the exit of turn two, where Travis Mitchell got into the wall and he took out Andre Lannons and both the Band brothers, Robert and Alex. When I saw that crash, I just went nuts. But but I had to, but I had to keep, keep commentating as they went into as they went into turn three. I noticed that the number 12 of Justin Perry, that's my teammate in the Arca series. And I was thinking, whoa, where did he come from? That's, and as you see, and they're going three wide for the lead. Dylan Pote, Tim Fagel, and Justin Perry. And Justin Perry's going to capitalize, but here comes, here comes Summit Oscon in the 16. It was Tim Feigl, Dylan Pote, and Justin Perry heading through turns three and four, three wide for that win. And at the exit of turn four, Justin Perry, he got a little bit loose and he got into the middle row. And here comes that number 16 Impala of Simon Oscon. But Justin Perry, he was just lucky enough to hold him off. And he captured his second win in the NNSCRA Caterpillar Arca Series. That was probably one of the best Daytona finishes I have ever recorded in my commentating career. They're coming out of turn four right now. And sounds like I was kind of going to make the move, but it's going to be Justin Perry. Oh my gosh, what a finish. Justin Perry captures his second win in the, in the NNSCRA Caterpillar Arca Series. He takes the yellow flag and the checkered flag. <laughs> a last lap crash, going three wide for the finish, and a last lap pass. I got to give it to Justin Perry because he drove his heart out in that number 12 car. I mean, he came out of nowhere and won. That just goes to show you that, that Daytona's unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I think that was one of the best NSCRA moments that have ever happened. And I bet there's going to be more to come. You just wait and see. So Trent Dunham's favorite moment coming in the Arca series over on his channel. And that certainly was an incredible finish, no doubt about that. I remember that as if it were yesterday. That was a wonderful finish. And uh, normally you don't get those kind of finish with ARCA cars, but there at Daytona, a last lap wreck, and a finish like that, unbelievable. Well, Alexander Dawson finds himself out in front in this thing, and he knows what it's like to be out in front after getting into this event by winning the Snickers Shootout number one. As he will lead the way, before we go through this restart order, we would like to inform that Jamie Watson, Arnold Columbia, and Tim Walsh, they have all taken their race cars back to the garage area. They will not win the all-star race for the Snickers Cup Series, so a tough break for all of them. They'll have to hope for next year. As Alexander Dawson leads the way, you know the top five that came off pit road, but we'll give it all to you again. Dawson leads, Anthony McCurry second, Matthew Rodriguez is third, fourth is Trent Dunham, and Aaron Williams just barely beat Max Russell off pit road for fifth. Russell will restart in sixth. Vincent Marsh, after starting dead last, the first car wrecked out in segment one, he's up to seventh. Good run right now for him. T.O. Bain, he's eighth. Ninth is Barney Ward, and Aaron Reed is tenth. Jamie Muckley, good run in eleventh. Twelfth is Dylan Poteet. Jacob Cook is 13th, 14th is Daniel Schwab, Sean Henley 15th, rest of the top 20 is Ben Ward, Mary Cole, Danny Wells, Trent Whitney, and Dylan Young. Pace car has peeled off, we'll go back to green flag racing on lap 8 of 50. Folks, this is going to be a long race with 50 laps in it, so we are going to be running as few commercials as possible. As a matter of fact, I have just been informed that that commercial we just showed you with Trent Dunham is going to be the last one we will show you during this event. So, for those of you that were looking forward to the commercials, I apologize, but this is going to be an extremely long race, and we'd like to bring every bit of the action to you in all one video. 
Right now, Alexander Dawson has the top spot, but Anthony McCurry, he was getting quite a run off of turn two down the back straightaway, and he's going to go to the inside, but he's got no drafting help. Where's the drafting help going to come from? Here comes Trent Dunham and Max Russell, two Chevys. They're going to help fellow Chevy Anthony McCurry. Well, no, they're not. Looked like they were going to. Whoa, Trent Dunham, he almost got into Alexander Dawson. That could have been a big wreck there on the front straightaway, but they keep it together, and Anthony McCurry leads the way. It's actually very difficult to tell him and Jack Richards apart. They're running very similar Diet Mountain Dew paint schemes. But uh, now it won't be hard to realize them both because I think that Jack Richards had to have his hood removed after that damage he sustained in that first wreck. Here comes Jacob Cook to the inside. Cook got into this event by being in the top 10 in standings. He was also a championship contender in the Snickers Cup Series last season. He may so be again, and here comes Dylan Poteet to the inside. He's, oh, he's trying. Whoa. Boy, that was a little close off that corner. Things start to narrow up off the corners, which is what makes us nervous here, because the car's going to slide up, and they can make contact, and it can just get nasty in a hurry. Poteet trying to hold off Alexander Dawson and meanwhile hook up the drafting help of his. Oh, there's Vincent Marsh. I think he just made a pit stop. Don't know if it was scheduled or unscheduled. And there he is. Yeah, he's off the pace. He's now one lap down in 35th position. Oh, what a tough break for Vincent. I don't know what happened to him. But something went amiss on that race car. Oh, boy. What a shame for Vincent Marsh's oh, new leader. Jake Rogers, first time we've seen him up front all day long. He wasn't even up front in the first segment. And they're going to go four wide for the lead. Henley, Aaron Reed, Jake Rogers, and Daniel Schwab into turn one they go. And they keep it all straight. Comes Teal Bain. And I'll tell you what, Trent Dunham, Alexander Dawson, since this drop of the green flag here in segment two, they've been up inside the top ten. All day long, really. They, they, they've just not seemed to fall to the back. And speaking of Alexander Dawson, he's going to go three wide. He's going to go right back to the front. Look at Jamie Muckley. Filling in very nicely in that number 37 ride right now. Trying to take the lead. It would be the first lap Muckley has led in the All-Star race. And he's going to try and get Dawson at the stripe. Not quite enough. Four wide for the lead they will go. It looks like Trent Whitney. Snickers Cup Series points leader? No, cannot get by Rodriguez, who will take the lead. That's Matthew Rodriguez in the 84, but here comes Whitney back to the inside. He's going to try again. Trent Whitney in the Dr. Pepper Chevrolet. And he's trying to keep his wave of momentum going and going to take that into Lowe's. He's got a huge points lead. It's, it's almost, not yet mathematically certain, but it's almost certain that Trent Whitney is going to be a championship contender for the Snickers Cup Series championship. But you know what happens? When the chase comes around, the points are all even again, and they have to build once more with their finishes on the points that they have gotten being a championship contender. As Dylan Poteet now is a contender for the lead and will take it from Max Russell. He's got Ben Ward all over him. Ben Ward was certainly a big surprise at Pocono, picking up his first career win. The race after that, his brother Barney Ward did it. And Barney Ward, by the way, we haven't talked about him. He's actually right back behind Trent Whitney there in the 49. He's still very much in this thing. This is a nice little green flag run we've gone into. We're getting to see some real nice racing here as Jacob Cook now will take the lead. And, oh, just like that, there goes Daniel Schwab. Oh, come on. Schwab and Trent Dunham. And Dunham, I don't think, hit anything. He's, he's coming down pit road. I don't think Dunham hit the wall. There's a, there's a little bit of damage to the left side of that car, some scrape marks, but... I think he got through that whole thing without any damage. He's going to just make a pit stop. And Daniel Schwab, on the other hand, he's not going to make a pit stop. He's going to come back out on the racetrack. And it looks like it's going to be a four-tire stop for Trent Dunham. Eric Burton, he's also on pit road. And the leader under the caution flag is Jacob Cook. Well, nope, they're going to race it back to the stripe here. 
And that may put Trent Dunham down a lap. Dunham's got to get going. And he's not going to. Dunham's going to get caught a lap down for making a pit stop there. Not sure if that was wise strategy by the one car. Daniel Schwab, I think his spotter was better informed than Trent Dunham's was. I think Trent thought the caution had come out. Oh, wait, there is no caution. No caution. Trent Dunham must have either been misinformed or thought the caution was going to come out, decided to come down pit road and just make a pit stop. Daniel Schwab, on the other hand, he was informed that there was no caution. He continued down pit road and left pit road without making a pit stop because there is no caution out for the spinning Trent Dunham and Daniel Schwab. Oh boy, that that's not going to fare well for Trent Dunham. He's going to be so pissed off at his crew chief for not telling him that there was no caution there. Dunham's lost a lap to the leaders because of it, and boy, I'll, I'll tell you what, he's going to be chewing his crew chief out after this race, no doubt about it. Trent Dunham, one of the top contenders all day long, started off this segment in the fourth position, Never really fell out of the top 10. He's now suddenly fallen one lap down, and it's pretty much on the shoulders of his crew chief or his spotter, whichever one he wants to blame, pretty much is going to have to take it because Trent Dunham had no indication of whether the caution had come out or not. That was fully on the crew chief's or the spotter's shoulders. Things are kind of spread out here. Except right there between Anthony McCurry and T.O. Bain. They're literally leaning on each other as Mary Cole goes to the front. Not for long. Here comes Dylan Poti. Here comes Sean Henley. But while these guys are racing their heads off, let's look back and see what happened to Danny Schwab and Trent Whitney and just exactly what was going on with the one car and the 56. Okay, here's what happened to Schwab. Oh! Jamie Muckley and Alexander Dawson made some contact. Sends them down and then... Oh, 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 oh. You know, Trent Dunham, he tried to go around the 56 and the car snapped around on him and he spun out. But then here's the thing that's really important. Trent Dunham continues on down pit road. Daniel Schwab's going to try and get his car turned around to continue down as well. And here's where the problem comes in. Trent Dunham has not been informed that there is no caution. He thinks that there is for the spin off of turn four, so he decides he's going to work some strategy and make a pit stop. There you see him get on the brakes. He's going to make the left-hand turn into his pit box. Now, I would think in that amount of time, the, the crew chief or the spotter would have said, hey, there is no caution, but apparently Dunham was not informed of that, and take a look here at Daniel Schwab. He says... Yeah, there's no caution. I'm going to keep going. But uh, certainly a big misread on the part of some crew member of the Banana Boat Chevrolet. And that's going to end their day on a sour note. Just a tough break for Trent Dunham. So Trent Whitney has now taken the lead. As a matter of fact, I think we got pit stops going on. Danny Wells, I think, is just radioed in that he's coming down pit road. Jamie Muckley, the same thing. Yeah, here they come. Some drivers from up front as well. There's Dylan Young, Christian James, Tony Speed, Ben Ward. They're on pit road. Adam Chambers is on pit road as well. So these drivers are coming in for regularly scheduled stops on lap 20 of 50. Let's look around and see if Trent Whitney or anybody else is going to come down this time by. Coming up on the slower car of Jeff Ehlers, who was caught up in that first wreck of the day. And, yep, here they come. Ehlers is coming down, too, even though he's put a lap down. T.O. Bain, Jacob Cook. Oh, look at this. Look at this gaggle of cars. Good gravy. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Look at them all. It's feeding time at the zoo. They'll file down here to the front of Pit Road. And the leader is going to be, at this point, Aaron Reed in the 66 car. Galligan, he's in. Jack Richards, oh, they did get the repairs done to the 5 car. Okay, so he is not missing his hood. 
And there goes Whitney, there goes T.O. Bain, there goes Sean Henley, Dylan Poteet, Mary Cole, Jacob Cook, all the leaders. Let's see if we can find out if Aaron Reed is coming down pit road this time. Yep, here he comes, Dougie Shears, Alexander Dawson. They're on pit road as well. And Reed will pull in. That's three Toyotas coming in together there. Rather interesting. Seth Cole, he completes his service. Dawson, he's been up front all day. Dougie Shears was the leader at that point. And I think that would cycle the lead back around to Trent Whitney. I don't know for certain. Going to try and get the official word on that. Uh, Yeah, I think that is. Yep. That will cycle the lead around to the 46 of Trent Whitney. And this green flag pit stops has really broken the field up. You got Whitney, who is the leader now, as he'll go by Aaron Reed. Or wait, is he, is he the leader? Yeah. Yep, Trent Whitney is the leader. We're going to wait till they come around here and hit the stripe again, so we have the official running order don't want to end up misleading you and saying somebody's running somewhere when they're not but right now it is all Trent Whitney with quite a bit of a gap over Sean Henley and Teal Bain who are battling it out for what I believe would be second place now here he comes down to the stripe lap 23 will go on the board and we will then show you the full field rundown as it is indeed confirmed that Trent Whitney is the leader second is going to be T.O. Bain Third, Sean Henley. Fourth is Dylan Poteet. Fifth, Ben Ward. Sixth place will be Mary Cole. Seventh, Aaron Reed. Eighth, Jacob Cook. Ninth, Anthony McCurry. And Dylan Young is tenth. Max Russell is eleventh. Twelfth is Connor Breton. Thirteenth, Adam Chambers. Fourteenth is Barney Ward. And fifteenth is Dougie Shears. Sixteenth place is where we find Tony Speed. Seventeenth is Ryan Acosta. Eighteenth, Jake Rogers. Nineteenth, Emilio Navarrete. 20th is Matthew Rodriguez, 21st Christian James, 22nd is Felix Harris, 23rd is Alexander Dawson, 24th Sean Galligan, Danny Wells, 25th, 26th Jack Richards, 27th is going to be Jamie Muckley, 28th is Bill Doberpool, 29th is Aaron Williams, 30th is Trent Dunham, who I believe is back on the lead lap now. After the cycle of pit stops, that is indeed the case. Uh, 31st is Seth Cole. 32nd place, one lap down. That's where we find, I believe, Daniel Schwab. Trying to find 32nd. Nope, 32nd is Vincent Marsh. One lap down. 33rd is Daniel Schwab. One lap down. 34th place is going to be... Jeff Ehlers. He is also a lap down. 35th place, that's where we find... Uh... Well, maybe not. No, 35th place, I think, is out of the race. Yeah, 35th. Oh, no, 35th is Eric Burton we're getting a report of. And it's become a three-man fight for the lead. Trent Whitney, Sean Henley, and T.O. Bain as we've reached the halfway point here in the second segment. Yeah, we're only halfway through this thing. There's still 25 more laps to go. Here's coming up on the car of Seth Cole, who I believe is on the tail end of the lead lap. Yes, he is. Not anymore. They're going to bypass the Slim Jim Chevrolet, and he will go a lap down to the leaders. As T.O. Bain goes to the inside. Now, let's see how long it takes for these other drivers to catch up to these three. You got this big pack back here. Aaron Reed, Jacob Cook, Ben Ward, Mary Cole, and Dylan Poteet. They are slowly but surely starting to catch up to those front three. And before you know it, it'll be a eight-car fight for the lead rather than a three-car fight. They gotta maneuver their way around the Slim Jim Chevrolet of Seth Cole, though. Lots of room to do it. They're gonna all go down to the low side of the Slim Jim Chevrolet for Cole and Bryant Motorsports. He'll give them lots of room, and now they are gonna get to work on catching up to the front three, which is going three wide. That's not exactly a smart move if you're trying to get away from somebody, but Whitney, Henley, T.O. Bain, maybe they're just feeling each other out. Maybe they know it's inevitable that that bigger group's going to catch them, and they're seeing what they are capable of doing here. Oh! Caution is out. Caution waves, and... 
We don't know why. I could venture a guess, and I probably would be wrong. I'm looking through the field here, and I'm seeing no damage to any race car. It could have been Trent Dunham, actually. Don't know for certain. We're going to look back at a replay, see what exactly put us under the caution here for the second time today. Well, we looked and we looked. We couldn't exactly find the problem at first, but now we know what the problem was. An engine giving up the ghost, and it was Seth Cole. You can see the smoke pouring out of the Slim Jim Chevrolet there as the cars make their pit stops. That just spread oil and everything all over the racetrack, and so NASCAR... NSCRA, they threw the caution. Looks like Vincent Marsh, Anthony McCurry, Daniel Schwab, Sean Galligan, they're all going to stay out. A little strategy working out here is everybody else is coming down pit road. Trent Dunham, I believe this put him back on the lead lap. That is indeed the case. And off the pit road comes Trent Whitney. As we will watch the race off of pit road. And it looks like T.O. Bain's going to lead them all off. Oh, there's someone spun on pit road. Oh, blocking the track. That was, or pick, blocking pit road. That, I believe, was uh, Connor Breton. It's, it's Seth Cole. Wait a minute. Where? Oh, Connor Breton is smoking. Breton comes off pit road with smoke pouring out of that race car. Let's quickly look back at the replay. See what happened to the 21. This was during pit stops, and he's going to come out just when Tony Speed is coming in. And, oh, that was a hard lick. And then, oh, he runs right into the back of Jake Rogers. Oh, then there's Ben Ward involved on pit road. And, oh, man, tough break for Connor Breton in the 21. He was, he was really not up there at the front all day, but he was at least on the lead lap. And look at Alexander Dawson have to maneuver his way around the disabled number 21. Just a tough break on pit road. For Connor Breton. Lap 31 of 50. That's the lap we'll go back to Green Flag Racing on. You'll see the lap cars coming up on the inside line. Vincent Marsh, Jeff Ehlers, Daniel Schwab, and Eric Burton. They are all one lap down to the leaders. As we have no drivers out of the race with the exception of Seth Cole. After his engine blowing. Where's Connor Breton? I thought that his car was going to be out of the race after smoking. Oops, missed Connor. Where is he? Well, we have just gotten the report. Connor Breton did retire from the race, so they just haven't gotten the scoring updated yet. So here's the way they look as we go back to green flag racing. Anthony McCurry is the leader. Second place is Sean Galligan. Third now is Trent Dunham after being caught a lap down. He's now into third place. That caution was timely for him. Fourth, T.O. Bain. And Trent Whitney runs in fifth. Sean Henley is sixth. Aaron Reed is seventh. Eighth is Dylan Young, ninth is Adam Chambers, and Jacob Cook completes the top ten. Christian Janes is in eleventh, Jamie Muckley is in twelfth, Barney Ward runs thirteenth, fourteenth is Dylan Poteet, and Mary Cole is in fifteenth. Ryan Acosta, sixteenth, seventeenth is Felix Harris, eighteenth place Aaron Williams, nineteenth Amelia Navarre, and Max Russell is in twentieth. Alexander Dawson, he's twenty-first, twenty-second Dougie Shears, twenty-third is Jake Rogers, twenty-fourth place is Danny Wells. Bill Doberpool runs in 25th, 26th Matthew Rodriguez, 27th Jack Richards, Tony Speed runs in 28th, and Ben Ward completes the rest of the cars in the lead lap in the 29th position. Chevy Camaro pace car peels off, we'll go back to Green Valley Racing with a total of 20 laps remaining. Now remember, Trent Dunham, however, he may be in third, but he's off pit sequence with the rest of these drivers. He certainly doesn't want to have anything happen with a long green flag run. If he could get a caution quick, that certainly would help out his chances of remaining up inside the top five. Or at least remaining on the lead lap as Anthony McCurry is going to maneuver around the lap car of Vincent Marsh. Sean Galligan in second trying to do the same, but not having as much luck with Vincent Marsh as McCurry did. Now he will try and power around on the high side, but Vincent Marsh looks like he's up to speed with the rest of the drivers there. No, he's not having really any problems getting up to speed. Now here comes Sean Galligan as he has cleared the 18, and Galligan will go to the lead. Sean Galligan in the new blue Hartlepool Toyota. 
Craftsman also on the back in honor of his Craftsman Car Series, which is now in its third season. Galligan will lead the way. He's got quite a bit of real estate right now over Sean Henley, T.O. Bain, and Anthony McCurry, who are in a battle for second, along with Dylan Poteet. Now McCurry gets the second position, but Galligan, he's kind of running away right at the moment. Don't know if that's exactly a good thing, but we'll see. As Anthony McCurry is starting to close in, and now he'll get the big run down the back straight away, and here he comes to the inside line. I thought I heard some squealing tires back there, but I don't see any caution lights on, so I guess I'm hearing things. It happens when you get to be my age. Anthony McCurry leads the way. Sean Galligan now under fire for second. Sean Henley there trying to get that spot. Dylan Poteet, Aaron Reed, and how about Dylan Young suddenly emerging himself up into the top 10 in the Universal Studios Florida Toyota. Alexander Dawson, I think he started back just inside the top 20, and he's all of a sudden up back up here inside the top 10. Just a primary example of how this track continues to change the outcome of a race. And how about Dougie Shears? We haven't talked about our Season 1 Snickers Cup Series champ at all today. What a good run right now for that Red Bull Toyota Camry. Oh, they got the slower car up ahead. That is Trent Dunham. He had to make a pit stop there. He was off pit sequence with everybody else. Mary Cole also had to make a pit stop. Don't know what was amiss there, but Mary Cole, she might go a lap down now after running up inside the top 10 for most of the day. Oh, everybody's trying to maneuver their way around Trent Dunham. He is not up to speed with these cars. Everybody also trying to get around Mary Cole. Is it going to be Sean Galligan, Anthony McCurry, and Aaron Reed? Rather ironic, all three of those race cars, they're divisible by 22. You got the 44, the 66, and the 88. Well, for that matter, they're all divisible by 11, but let's not get into mathematics. Anyway, Sean Galligan leads the way still. He really has not relented the lead ever since he took it from Anthony McCurry, but now McCurry wants it back. These two, McCurry and Galligan, they've been up front on this last restart. They've led the last four laps, and we may get some new players into the field, though. Here comes Aaron Reed, here comes Sean Henley, and here comes Barney Ward in the 49, but... Galligan's strong on the high side. He's going to try and slingshot on Aaron Reed. Whoops. My bad. And Reed's not going to have any of it. He's going to stick tough down there on the inside line. Sean Henley, instead of going underneath Reed, he's going to fall back and give the drafting help to that number 66. Actually, Henley seems to be a little bit off the pace there, right there. He... I don't know if he got loose and just lost momentum or what, but he he lost some speed off that turn. Still side-by-side side between the two Toyota Camrys. One from Red Bull Racing, one from Prism Motorsports, as it is still Galligan and Reed side-by-side. Side. Galligan's going to try and power around on the high side again, but this time he slides too wide through turns one and two, and Aaron Reed goes to the front. Reed, of course, the winner of the Snickers shootout number two. So he knows how to win it here at MM Super Speedway. Seen a few drivers up here at the front we haven't seen for a while. Adam Chambers is now up into fourth, and Trent Whitney has found his way back up into the top five as he now takes the fifth position from Anthony McCurry. Battle for the lead, it's going to be Adam Chambers, our defending Snickers Cup Series champ from season two. That's the only thing that got him into this event. He's 35th in points. He's winless this season. He needs to get this season turned around. And he had a bit of success early on this season in the Castrol GTX paint scheme. So he brought it back here for the All-Star race. Here comes Trent Whitney, though. The current points leader. He will go to the front. But here, just like that, comes Anthony McCurry to the inside. Dougie Shears coming as well. Mary Cole behind him is one lap down. Even though she is up to speed with these drivers, she had to make an unscheduled pit stop for a loose wheel on the 2 if by t Toyota Camry. And now she's going to go to the inside. This would put her back on the lead lap. She would then have to hope that a caution could come out here as there was another driver who just went to pit road. That may have been Christian Janes. I think it was. Whether it was unscheduled, scheduled, don't know. There's Ben Ward. He was also on pit road a lap ago. Sean Galligan's on pit road. We got pit stops again. 
They last pitted back, I believe it was on lap 20. And now lead lap cars are going to be making pit stops here. Sean Galligan there. Oh, oh, caution. Caution's out. What's the caution out for? Whoa, oh, Ryan Acosta. Oh, just got nailed by Eric Burton. Oh, look at that car flipping around. Oh, Ryan Acosta. Oh, my word. Oh, oh, oh. Felix Harris was involved as well. Sean Henley, Jacob Cook, add them to that list. T.O. Bain. And Christian James, he's going to get that pit stop done, and he's gone. Same for Sean Galligan. This could help those two out. Can they get out ahead of the leaders? Yes, they did. Galligan and James. Pit strategy works out to perfection for them. But Sean Henley, T.O. Bain, Jacob Cook, Felix Harris, Eric Burton, and Ryan Acosta nailing each other. And the leader under the caution is Aaron Reed. Let's look back and see Ryan Acosta's hard hit on the back straightaway. We got only 10 laps to go in the All-Star race. Watch carefully here. I think Max Russell, I think maybe Jacob Cook comes up into Russell right there. Yeah, oh, oh, and then Henley comes down into Russell. Dougie Shears almost got turned by Trent Whitney, and there you see Acosta. Oh, what a save by Dylan Young. And Jacob Cook, Sean Henley, they spin the infield. You got T.O. Bain there. And then Ryan Acosta. And then watch coming into your screen. Eric Burton in the 22. And there he is right... You're going to have to look in the smoke for his race car. Acosta's getting ready to turn around and here he comes. Oh! And watch the 80 car spinning, flipping. He's going to be very dizzy. And I, I thought, I thought we were going to be able to get away with not having barrel rolls here in the Snickers Cup Series. Well, that's not the case. Thank heavens that car landed on all four wheels, though, after that wild ride. You can't really even call it a barrel roll. That car just stayed in one area and flipped round and round and round. Let's go back to green. Here we go. Pit stops being made after that wreck occurred. Aaron Reed, Emilio Navarrete, Dylan Poteet. They're all coming down pit road. Anthony McCurry, Adam Chambers, the top five, the whole field. They're coming down pit road. Doesn't look like anybody's staying out. This again, I believe, is going to put Trent Dunham back on the lead lap. And look at Sean Galligan and Christian James go by. After making that tremendous pitch strategy move there, they're going to be one and two. Oh, Aaron Reed and Sean Henley make contact off pit road. Not much damage sustained, but boy, you got to be careful of this pit road. Man. Anyway, looks like uh, the first one off of pit road is going to be Aaron Reed, then Emilio Navarre, then Jamie Muckley, Dylan Poteet, and Dylan Young. But we've got the top two out in front. And that is Sean Galligan and Christian James. They pace the field right now. As they are one and two. Let's get to the green flag now. So we have a total of seven laps remaining when they hit the stripe. It's going to be drivers out of the race that will not compete for the win. Ryan Acosta, Eric Burton, and Felix Harris. They have retired from the event. And here's the way they line up for the restart. And this could be our final restart of the day as well. Sean Galligan leads. Christian James second. Aaron Reed third. Emilio Navarro fourth. Jamie Muckley fifth. Dylan Poteet sixth. Dylan Young seventh. Tony Speed eighth. Anthony McCurry ninth. And Adam Chambers is tenth. Trent Whitney is 11th, 12th is Matthew Rodriguez, 13th Jade is uh, Barney Ward, rather, 14th is Jake Rogers, 15th Alexander Dawson, Jack Richards, with a damaged race car and all, he's back up here, he's still in 16th, Aaron Williams still in it in 17th, Dougie Shears is 18th, Danny Wells 19th, and 20th is Bill Doberpool, 21st place is Max Russell, one lap down, that's where we find Mary Cole, also one lap down is Trent Dunham, Vincent Marsh is a lap down, Daniel Schwab is a lap down, Ben Ward is a lap down, Jeff Ehlers is a lap down, then you've got 22nd place Jacob Cook, 23rd place Sean Henley, 24th place T.O. Bain. 
24 cars left on the racetrack. I believe 29 cars still are make it 29 cars on the racetrack, 24 of them on the lead lap. So here we go. It's Galligan, James, Aaron Reed. Then it's Emilio Navarrete and Jamie Muckley in the fifth position. Who's going to take the checkers? Who's going to win the all-star race? Sean Galligan, Christian James. Their tire's a little bit older, but only by one lap. Green flag is out. You know the old saying, cautions breed cautions. And now it is go time. Drivers have to make the moves they would not normally make if they're going to get into the get into victory lane and win the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race. Christian James, first time we've seen him out in front of this field today. He is our defending Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race winner, and he paces the field here, and we're still green. Galligan and Dylan Poteet, they're going to come to the inside now, and they're going to blow by the Best Buy Ford, just like that, into turn three, new leader, Sean Galligan, in the Hartlepool Toyota Camry. Here comes Dylan Poteet, and here comes Dylan Young. Dylan Young is our Truck Series race winner. Don't forget, he knows how to win here, and here he comes to the inside. It's a battle of the Dylans for second place. Poteet up high, Young down low. And here comes the unknown factor, Jamie Muckley. Down to the inside there for that second position. He's going to go three wide with the two Dillons, and he's going to get the spot. Anthony McCurry has emerged back into the picture now. And Matthew Rodriguez along with Jake Rogers, they're into the picture now. A lot of drivers we're seeing up here at the front that we haven't seen before. Could be that they were laying back, could have been some strategy, or it could just be that fate is playing out in their favor. Here we go, battle for second, five wide, Rogers, and here comes our Mobile One Cup Series race winner, Aaron Williams. There's that orange car there, right side of your screen. The Skittles Toyota is coming back to the front. Six laps to go. It's all Sean Galligan right now. He's been pretty strong here in the late stages of the All-Star race. You gotta wonder if anything's, anybody's got anything for that number 44 car. Here comes Jake Rogers. Here comes Aaron Williams. They're battling side by side. That is for the second position. Alexander Dawson now moves into the picture here. Look at him move Emil Navarro up to the high side. He says, hey, I want to draft with my buddy Aaron Williams here in these closing stages. But now, here comes the freight train down low. Dougie Shears, Christian Janes, and the lap car of Mary Cole. Galligan still leads the way. It's starting to become pins and needles time. For fan and driver alike, Galligan is the leader. Aaron Williams is now second. Jake Rogers is third. Anthony McCurry fourth. And Christian Janes completed the top five, crossing the start-finish line that time by. Five laps to go. Make it now four and a half till one driver realizes their dream and becomes the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race winner. Could it be Galligan? Could it be Aaron Williams? Could Christian Janes be a winner two times in a row in this amazing event. Here comes Anthony McCurry. Here comes Adam Chambers. Could our defending champ be the all-star race winner in season three? Oh boy. Here we go. Four laps remaining. Looks like the top four are going to be single file heading down here into this turn. Well, as soon as I said that, Mary Cole, the lap car, goes underneath Air, uh, Adam Chambers, moves him up to the high side. They're five wide for fourth back there. But it is still Galligan with the lead. Now the battle is back on again for second between Anthony McCurry and Aaron Williams. Nobody seems to have anything for the 44 of Galligan. Now they're going to try and get back to single file. Mary Cole, the lap car, tell you what, I don't know if she's trying to get back on the lead lap or something, but she is battling hard here, and oh, there's the damaged car of Tony Speed, he was involved in an earlier incident, and that's going to hold up Galligan, and here comes Aaron Williams to the inside, he's looking to go two for three, with two wins this weekend, and look at Mary Cole, she wants to get back on the lead lap, that's not a battle for the lead, that's trying to get back on the lead lap, as Dylan Pote lead now, Christian James is there, Matthew Rodriguez is there, Oh boy, look out, look out, look out. Jeff Ayler's the slower car ahead. 
How are they going to get around him? Ooh. Williams is going to, or Petit's going to go to the inside. Actually make that the outside. Matthew Rodriguez instead going to go low. And here comes Jake Rogers into the picture. When they come down. Oh, spin, spin. But is it enough for the caution? No, no caution. And the spin was who? Can't tell. Oh, there they are. Oh, Dylan Young and Jamie Muckley. They spin in the closing stages here. Two laps to go. Make it one and a half as they hit the back straightaway. Matthew Rodriguez leads. Jake Rogers second. Dylan Poteet third. Fourth place is Christian James and Trent Whitney is up to fifth. Jamie Muckley, Dylan Young, what a tough break for both those young drivers as they are going to not win the all-star race after spinning down pit road off of turn four. Here's Rogers to the inside, but look out, look out, Ben Ward, he's going to come down pit road, he's going to get out of the way, and here we go. White flag in the air, who led that lap? I think Rodriguez did, he did, but Rogers is to the inside. Take a look at our aerial view. Here's Christian Janes coming to the inside, just like that. Off into the back, straight away they come. It's Rogers and Christian Janes. Here comes Trent Whitney to the inside. The white flag was displayed. It was displayed for Matthew Rodriguez, but here we go. Rogers, Christian Janes, Trent Whitney, Dougie Shears is in the mix here now. Dylan Poteet into the final corners. Off turn four for the final time. Rogers, he's going to try and battle back here on the high side, but it looks like Christian James has won it. James, he's got the line blocked. And Christian James, for the second straight year, wins the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race. Have you ever? Christian James is going to win the All-Star Race for the Snickers Cup Series for the second straight year. Last year, the All-Star Race took place at, I believe, Trenton in Trenton, New Jersey. This year, it takes place here at Eminem Super Speedway. It didn't matter. Christian James was up to the task. And guess what? Christian James has now clenched himself a spot into next year's All-Star Race in the Snickers Cup Series. Unbelievable. What a race. Christian James gets it done. So congrats to him on his win Everybody else is going to have to go home, get prepared for Lowe's. Christian James, he's going to go home with the trophy, with the prestige, and with the million dollar check. The Best Buy Ford goes to Victory Lane here today in the All-Star Race. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week at Lowe's Motor Speedway as we get back into the regular season. Christian James has won the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race for the second year in a row. You've been watching the NSRE Sports Channel Offline Racing at its best.